And that's sort of the problem. We are 20 years later and we are on Drag Race Season 16. We expect this to be elevated. And elevated it is not. Hello, my beautiful life rights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neil Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 8, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And at the end of the episode, I'll let you know who had my fabs and drabs of the week. This week, the, the category on the runway is Dancing Queen, the, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of a dance style. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, it's Q, and Q is giving us the robot. She's coming out in this multicolored jumpsuit with these kind of comb bras and this twirly whirly wire hair. She is definitely giving you concept with this look. I think this is a really unique interpretation. When you think dancing styles, robot is not necessarily the dancing style that comes up first to me, but I like that she went there and she went a little bit more campy with it and she made it a little bit more fun. She used all the colors. She really said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go all the way with it. Now, I would have never thought of robot, but had I thought of robot, this is not how I would have thought to do it. I personally think I would have went in more of a metallic Mugler slash Beyonce Renaissance version of a robot. Uh, but I like that she took it in a different direction. So just in case somebody else did robot, you knew they weren't gonna do the same. On top of it, she already did a silver look on the runway. So this is a nice contrast. All in all, I think this is really interesting, really unique and very well made as Clue's looks always are. So for this one, it is definitely going to be a fun. Next up, it's Tsunami Muse. And Tsunami Muse is coming in serving the salsa. She's coming in in this very metallic frill number that just moves so elegantly as she rocks down the runway. It is definitely giving you the salsa vibes. Now, I think I would have liked this outfit had this not been the exact same outfit as what she did for Cher. That is right, look at this. Let's put these side by side and let's look at these. These are supposed to be two different outfits. You cannot tell me these are two different outfits. They look like the same outfit and that's the problem. I feel like I've seen this and I've seen it on her. Had she not done this before, I probably would have fabbed it. But this is a repeat and we do not repeat looks on Drag Race. And that is why for Tsunami Muse's salsa look, it is definitely gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Nymphia Wind, and Nymphia Wind is coming out giving us Japanese Butoh. Uh, so for those of you who do not know, Japanese Butoh is a traditional Japanese style of dance that emerged uh, after World War II, and it is a contrast to ballet. Now look at that, Drag Race is teaching us some culture, bitch! But Nymphia Wind has decided to come out, is uh, coming out in this big beige gown filled with leaves, branches, and all of these uh, furry bits. She said that this is a darker twist on a ballet style and I'm like contemporary what? This looks so elegant. It is so over the top and it is so Nymphia Wind. Now I didn't know anything about uh, this style of dance but if this garment has anything to show for it I definitely need to look it up. This is so creepy and so spooky but also so elegant and fashion. It is definitely giving you everything that you want from a drag queen but also everything that you expect from Nymphia Wind. It is perfection from head to toe and I would not change a thing and that's why for Nymphia Wind it is 100% gonna be a fab. Next up, it's Dawn, and Dawn is coming out giving us polka. She's coming out in this big white poofy skirt with this sort of little vest detailing on the top, these big poofy sleeves, and these long pigtails. Now, for those of you who do not know, polka is a traditional Czech style dance, uh, but is now obviously done all around the world. But Dawn herself is decided that she is gonna tap into those traditional roots and give you this, this sort of 
old school, traditional Eastern European look. And this is definitely a character choice. Now I do am surprised that Dawn went in this direction. This is not what I saw for her at all. I, I don't know how this really fits in with Dawn's character, but I don't know any style of dance that would actually fit in with Dawn's character. Um, this is definitely feeling very costumey to me and is not my favorite. It's also not like over the top enough for it to be drag. Like if, if you are gonna take a sort of traditional historic outfit, then what are you gonna do to it to make it like drag? Like drag it up, give me some lace, give me some sparkle give me some some little rhinestones give me something more this really feels like i can go buy it at a really nice costume shop and that is sort of the problem it's not giving me enough personality it's not giving enough uniqueness and it's not giving me enough dawn and that is why for this look it is definitely gonna have to be a drab <laughs> Next up, it's Sophia Cristal. Sophia Cristal is giving you drag you majorette. She's coming out in this dance costume in this blue and orange color scheme. And she's paired it with this giant Afro hair. And she is definitely giving you black excellence, mama. She is giving you step in. She is giving you college athlete. She is giving you a cheerleader, dance crowd, and she is selling it. She's coming out and she is moving like there's no tomorrow, and which is really smart way to do this because all of her gown is made in this sort of fringe material and moves alongside her. You are really definitely getting the dance a moment from it, but it also feels elevated and drag. I also love this big hair with it because the hair is A, off her face so she could move and do all these things, but also really big and tall to give you more drama to this, what could be potentially a plain outfit, but it is definitely not. On top of it, she decided to go with Drag You. She could have went with any college, uh, but she decided to go with Drag You to, you know, pay a little homage to the old school drag race uh, where Drag You used to be on TV. And you know, a little sucking up to root never hurt anybody. All in all, this is a great outfit. Now, the one thing I would definitely change are those shoes. As soon as she walked out, I was thinking it, and then Rue said it, and I was like, thank God me and Rue are on the same page. Honestly, this should have been a really tall high heel boot and made it very drag, or why not come out in like a combat boot? I know crazy to come out in combat boot, but this little sort of itty bitty kitten heel just doesn't work. For me, it's more of like, Either you do a heel and you do a heel as tall as it can be, or you don't do a heel and you make it purposeful and you give me a reason. This tiny little heel makes me feel like you don't know what you're doing. And Safira Cristal definitely knows what she's doing. What I do love is that Safira is able to weave her little blue in there and she did it again with this outfit. She is definitely giving you branding, but giving you subtly that we're not getting tired of it. This is not a Tina Burner situation. I don't even know how many people are realizing how much blue she's actually doing. Um, and, I, and, and that's the part that I love. She's always changing it up. It doesn't feel repetitive and it is definitely something new. All in all, despite the little things that I would change here and there, for Miss Safira Cristal, it is definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Plasma, and Plasma is giving you tap. She's coming out in this sort of like little pink mini dress with this pink fascinator, blonde hair, and the most rhinestone tights I've ever seen. The first thing I will say is it's so smart that Plasma chose tap. First of all, it definitely fits into her character, definitely fits into her brand of being like this sort of old school, old Hollywood look, and tap was big back then. On top of it, she knows how to tap. Thank God she does, because she is able to sell this garment. She is making me believe the fantasy, because once we start looking at the garment, mama, this ain't, this ain't it. It is just a plain little pink top. If you didn't tell me this was tap, there was a 0% chance I would know this is tap. This is not what I would have thought of as tap. If this is a, a traditional tap attire, sue me, but this ain't it for me. This definitely looks like a little jacket. I was fully expecting a reveal and no reveal came. All in all, this is a, this is a no nah for me and it is definitely gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Morphine Love Dion, and Morphine is coming out giving you flamenco. Ole! She is coming out in this red and black flamenco outfit with this jet black hair and a rose in her mouth. 
she is walking down the runway giving you that sultry flamenco flair and she is definitely selling it to you. I love this outfit for Morphine. If you ask me what type of dance Morphine uh, does, I would say Flamenco. It definitely fits her brand, it definitely fits her personality, and she definitely looks sexy in it, and Morphine is a very sexy queen. The black hair with the black in the dress all matches, and with the little rose, it's just that, that little on top. All in all, this is excellent from head to toe, and this is exactly what I wanted. So, for Morphine Love Beyond, it is definitely gonna be a bug. Next up, it's Maya Im on the page. Maya Im on the page is giving you 90s hip hop. She's coming out in this half red, half yellow garment with these big white poofy sleeves. And she's paired it with a mullet. Girl, what is going on here? First up, I understand the reference. She is definitely going for that salt and pepper sort of vibe. Um, you know, push it, push it real good. But honestly, salt and pepper did it better. And that's sort of the problem. We are 20 years later and we are on Drag Race season 16. We expect this to be elevated. And elevated it is not. I'm really disappointed because had I been on the show, 90s hip hop is the style I would have chosen. I know, surprisingly, but I just love the aesthetic. I love like the punk rock edge of it and it's super cool. But Maya like totally missed the boat on this. First, I will say that 90s hip hop is totally up her alley. She even chose 90s Little Kim for her look a few weeks back. So we know that she likes 90s, but can she do 90s? And I'm going to be like, probably not, because this is the second time she's done 90s and the second time she's flopped with 90s. All in all, this needs a lot of zhuzhing. First up, where's the graffiti at? Like, give me some graffiti, give me some color, give me that like, that, that 90s flair. Red and yellow just, isn't enough. I need all the colors of the rainbow. I need them all in there. I need them mixed in. I need some artistic styles. On top of it, she's paired it with a mullet. Now, when you think 90s hip hop, I do not think mullet. I think of a lot of other hairstyles, but mullet is not one of them. And I thought that was a very odd choice for her. I think that had this been even done with like just simple, like, like gorgeous, wavy red hair, it would have also really helped elevate it. All in all, the styling is bad, the look is bad, and it is definitely going to be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Plain Jane, and Plain Jane is giving you Latin ballroom. She is coming out in this silver fringy gown and it is moving as she walks down the runway. She's got this bodice top full of details, her slick black hair and her earrings. She definitely comes straight from the ballroom scene. She probably even got a ballroom designer to design this because it looks impeccably made. The main problem I have about this silver frilly dress is that we've not only seen it once, we've seen it twice on Tsunami News. And that's sort of the problem, is that we've seen it, and so therefore it doesn't feel as special. Now, just to give Plain Jane credit, she definitely did it so much better. This is very well made, very well put together, it's got all of Plain Jane's aesthetic sort of put into it, it is immaculately made, but it's not giving you that wow moment that we were expecting because we've seen it done. And that's such a shame for her because obviously they're not comparing packages, you don't know what people are going to be bringing on the runway. And once you're there, it's not like you brought two outfits of each, drag is expensive and they can't afford all that, so you kind of stuck with what you had. So that was a little bit of a downfall, but she does look excellent and she is following a theme. This is a great look. Unfortunately, uh, it's done a little bit late in the season, so it is not getting the va 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 voom that we would have expected. All in all, I still like it and she definitely did it better than Tsunami, so she is definitely getting a fab. And that is it for this week's runway. First off, I'm gonna say I really love this runway concept. It's really original and something different that we haven't seen. Honestly, I hope that they do this theme in another season of Drag Race to see what other things people will come up with. That being said, I don't think it was the strongest runway for this set of queens. And it had quite a few drags, which is unlike season 16 ever has done. But anyway, enough about that. Let's get into the part why you guys are really here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to Maya Iman LePage. Girl, you saw this one coming. This was just not at the same level as any of the other queens, and it is definitely going to be a drab.
But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to... Nikki Wind. Nikki Wind is becoming the fashion queen of the season. Did I say becoming? She is the fashion queen of the season and is really turning it up. Even when I didn't understand it, I can appreciate her, uh, her interpretation, but this one blew the other ones out of the water and just looked Stunning. Y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the series and we're getting really close. So do me the favor. Uh, once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.